Welcome back, Mark. Good to have you. Sarah, great to be back with you. First of all, in the sales environment, we knew you were taking pricing or, or higher pri passing along higher prices, but I think the market was just was surprised as to how much that's happening and how well it's working. Talk us through what that's been like. Yeah, Sarah, so we've been staying obviously very close uh, to inflation and trying to understand uh, in a very specific way what parts of our portfolio are feeling that pressure. And we've been trying to match that up with the timing or the rhythm of pricing. So we've taken two waves of pricing so far, um, designed to, as I said, very much match up to where we've seen inflation. We did talk about today a third wave. Again, that's really reflecting very specifically within our portfolio where we're seeing additional inflation uh, pressure, primarily in areas like wheat and flour and oils. Um, and so we're, we're trying to stay right in sync with that as best we can. And of course, price isn't the only tool in the bag, and it's really important uh, that we stay focused on keeping the value right on our products. And I think so far we've done a good job of trying to strike that right balance between uh, solving for inflation but also keeping things affordable. Are you going to continue to raise prices on items like goldfish and <clears throat> canned soup? Well, certainly uh, only if inflation continues to go uh, up. And I think right now, uh, with, the th with the pricing that we announced in April, that's our third uh, wave of pricing, we feel very good about where we're positioned right now. Um, it's a tough environment to predict exactly what we're right. going to see going forward. But I think that as we do move forward, we recognize that there are limits. And we've got to be, uh, again, focusing on things like our supply chain and productivity, areas where we can help manage costs so that we're not just solely reliant uh, on price. Because as I said, getting this balance right between value with consumers and meeting the, the pressures of inflation, a very, very important balance to get right. The, so the bummer in your report, Mark, according to, to investors and analysts, is that you reiterated earnings guidance, which suggests that fourth quarter earnings guidance comes in 47 to 57 cents, which was way below what the market was expecting. How are you explaining that today? Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we remain right on track with what our expectations were for the year. Uh, Q3 came in essentially where we expected it to come in, a little bit stronger on top line as we saw a, a little bit of a faster recovery in supply chain, uh, which is a great thing. Um, and a little bit of pressure on uh, the margin side as inflation's continued to grow. But as we project out through the balance of the year, uh, I would say from an earnings standpoint, we remain right on track with what we expected. So supply chain is getting better? What, what do you mean? What's happened? Yeah, so uh, as you know, Sarah, we've talked about it before. Um, it's been a, a tricky road to navigate as it relates to supply chain. I think from everything from material availability to labor. And I think our team has just done an extraordinary job. First, really working on labor to make sure that our proposition um, and attractiveness for our jobs and our facilities uh, are highly competitive. And we've done a very nice job uh, in filling the gaps that we had getting uh, the, the plants back up to operational levels that are consistent with being fully staffed. And then we've also been able to add capabilities as we've been moving forward and adding um, ways in which we're able to be more nimble, our, our inventory management uh, and our planning tools are much more robust. And that's enabled us to really unlock uh, more firepower as we both tried to stay up to pace with demand, but mm -hmm. also begin to replenish inventories for retailers as we've been kind of catching up over the last couple of quarters.